is I want to give you a real quick walkthrough. So all I've done is put this onto the spar. I did measure it, and I'm using a very thin guy uh, carbon fiber rod. I believe it's 1.5 millimeter. Okay, I've just tried to make it so that it's straight and symmetrical and that the tail lines up correctly and all of that jazz. Um, basically, the best way to do it is to put it on a flat and you'll do much better. Uh, when you have it on a flat, there's really not much mistakes you can make and it makes it so much easier, especially with the way this goes on and the line. Start with that and then measure up the tail until you have it perfect and then put on your wing and make sure that it lines up with those and you're all good to go. Just make sure you have it in the middle and make sure it's flat. And the best way to do that is to put something under each end and push it down on the middle and just glue it in the middle like I've done here. I actually did use a fair bit of glue because I want it to be pretty solid. Um, that being said, that was about it, guys. It makes it really, really easy to do. And I now have an ultra micro that's so much smaller than this one foot wingspan. I mean, there's my forearm. It's really not that small. I could certainly fly it in the house, in the bigger rooms, but the only way I could fly it in this room is if I was flying 3D the entire time. Um, and I believe I will be able to, and that's partly my plan. This is actually not meant to be fully 3D. It's meant more to just fly, um, cruise around the living room at really slow speeds, that kind of thing. So, that's it for this video. I just wanted to give you a quick update and what it looked like finished. Now, the only thing left to do to it is to add weight. Uh, we're going to add the necessary gear to it eventually, and it is going to be a sick little micro flyer. Uh, I'll probably use a really teeny motor, like a 3 mil motor, which is what I recommend, and maybe like a 200 mAh or 150 or even 100 mAh battery, anything to get it turning. Uh, because you really won't want much weight and it'll make it really, really slow flying. And that'd be perfect. Uh, that's exactly what I want for this. I want it slow flying and I want it to fly. Those are my only two requirements for it to fly and for it to be slow flying. Um, so I can fly it in my room, which isn't very big and cruise around and have little tiny flights, which with this theoretically in here, if it handles well enough, I can actually do, uh, with this one, I can't. So I'm going to make a focus on little tiny ones like this that I can fly in my house and that you can too. Keith out. Oh, wait. Uh, the other electronics. When you go for a two-for-one board, what that usually means is it'll have two little servos, then it'll have a receiver built in. And as long as you get yourself a transmitter to match that receiver, you will set CB that you are set to go. And what you do is you put those two servos to the tail and elevator and then you take your second two servos and you mount them right up inside here and the other one right here. And you basically have one controlling your ailerons on each side and one right here, a little tiny Y harness. And that'll be the hardest part is that all the wires have to be stuffed up inside and made short. And if you ask your local hobby shop, they can probably wire you up some shorties for your custom build. In my case... Um, I'm just going to work with the ones I get. I will get the shortest ones that I can possibly get, and I already know what's going to happen. They are going to be really long, which means I'm going to cut a section out of them uh, and use the uh, wires and just do it myself. I'm going to have to. It's easier if I just ask them for some wire and the connector ends and the whole ball of wax and make my own. Um, but you can just go into your hobby shop and they should be able to just whip that up for you. It's not that hard, um, but it is a bit of a pain to source out where you would get small enough ones for this if you want to do it that way. The other option is to do it with one servo, and that is actually doable. Um, one push, it pushes and pulls, right? So if you have it set up so that when the servo is acted on in one direction, basically you set it up here and you set a linkage up here, uh, that wouldn't necessarily work, but if you set it up in the right location, you can run your uh, rods from it out to these, and basically, when it pushes, it's going to push one and pull the other, but th for that, you need a standard type of servo with a big servo horn on it so that you can link onto both sides of it so that when it turns like this, one side gets pulled, the other side gets pushed. 
With the linear servos, you really can't do that at all. You don't have that option because they only move one way, which means you can move them this way or this way. Um, and in either case, it makes it really hard to activate these. Now, I do have a design in mind that would do that. If this motion side to side activated, had a rod attached to it, that rod pushes up against another that will push the whole of the aileron this way or this way. And that would allow it, when pushed this way, it'll push the aileron this way because I'll make a rod and then I'll make an arch off of that and it'll arch over to this spot so that when it does, it'll push against that linkage and pull the aileron up. And on the other side, it'll be pulling it down. When you move over this way, it'll pull this one up and pull this one down and it's the same type of thing um i can do it with an arch setup and i think it'll look good and i'm going to try it i have a couple ideas for ways i can do this off a linear servo with one servo so that's going to be the goal for this one it'll have one servo for the ailerons and then another uh single servo for the elevator and this will be an aileron an elevator machine and it will fly really well um that's one option, or I could go the other way and make it ailerons only and give you a little bit of rudder. That being said, uh, this is all good, and I think that you guys can sort it out on your own, but if you can't, stay tuned, like, subscribe, and share, because I will show you how to make this one work, and this is actually going to be pretty sick. Now, I know it seems kind of flimsy, but we are going to brace it, and we're going to brace the wing a little bit more. Uh, when we finalize the angle and that'll only happen when we get all the lift in it So stay tuned and I will make this a six series for you guys that will show you a variety of designs That you can build that actually are flyable in your home uh, And this one easily in your backyard that actually handles well and because of its based on what it is It actually does have some weight. It has a good design to fight the wind Believe it or not because these are angled sharply so the wind just doesn't splash up against something square and take you all over the place. And it locks in so well in the direction it's flying. It'll be quite rock solid. It resists rolling. It's going to be rock solid. Uh, and you guys can see why I've changed its name to the Eagle. I mean, it so looks like one. It's awesome. I love this thing. Anyway, it didn't ended up not looking like a dragonfly.